Hello album enjoyers, quick note to remind you of the Enjoy an Album Patreon page. For £5 a month you get two extra episodes a week. They are ad free. They are your fun, regular, normal episodes. Just me and Chris just fucking chatting and scatting about some of the best and worst albums of all time. Um, or You also get the access to the back catalogue of Patreon posts we've already done. Robbie Williams. Um, Iron Maiden Iron Maiden Len manuel Miranda's Hamilton Hamilton That was a good one um, We've recently done Janelle Monet. Ed Sheeran Janelle Monet. Ed Sheeran Oh The Raytons The Raytons <laughs> Yes There's been some really good episodes on there So yeah. worth it If you've run out of pods It's if, not like extra stuff It's not like some podcasts are like Oh hey We've we recorded a wee bit extra This isn't like The fucking Tremens man No this is Your gourmet <laughs> album enjoyer experience this is an extra meal absolutely and you might be like i don't want an extra meal you i'm do. full well this is a, a better one that you won't be more full of so how about that that is what we offer you also get <laughs> a, early access to live shows which is mm, probably one of the biggest sales so uh sign up to the patreon now at patreon.com slash enjoy an album before we get to bat out of hell by meat loaf I'm sitting here with guest host Roscoe McSmelland. Yeah. Roscoe McClelland. He is a good guy. Um, you got into plug at the start. Oh, we've done the plugs at the end. Done the plugs at the end, yeah. So He's doing a friend show. I'm plugging the end where you can hear my plugs. <laughs> I'm doing a friend show. Liam's doing a friend show. Liam can't make it. I should probably talk about that. He I thought he was gigging in Glasgow this weekend. Turned out he was gigging in Birmingham. Um, he's at the Penta Hotel right now, not to dox him. Classic Englishman can't manage his diary scenario. <laughs> Stereotype about English people. Yeah. They don't know how Google Calendar works. How do you think they lost the Commonwealth? Yeah. All the colonies. Name them. India. Mm-hmm. India. India? India. Opposite India. Australia. Thank you so much for choosing to listen to this podcast. Uh, we are going to have, uh, this is just an, an hour, I mean, Roscoe, he's replacing Liam quite well, talking about, um, I have to take the reins in this episode, it's not my strong point, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, so, I've heard it. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoy it as a little kind of stopgap measure. <laughs> it's not going to be permanent, hopefully. Um, depending on how well Liam heals from his uh, dick and balls exploding off his body, like... Um, Shrapnel from a uh, mine, landmine. Who was it who talked about taking a shovel and scraping the cock and balls? That off was a the new body? thing. What was that? That was a recent thing I seen that. Yeah, what is that from? Taking the shovel and just jutting it. Yeah. Was it Finn Taylor? No, I don't think so. I think I seen it on something. Do you know what? I actually, someone talked about that on uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, a role play server that I, I'm in. So They've copied that off someone because mm. I've seen that. Maybe they have. Maybe they have. Taking the dull end of a shovel and just... <laughs> yeah, they've copied someone. And that's what you... This is why podcasts are better than Twitch streaming. Because, you know, there's actually a culture of not stealing content from other people. Whereas on Twitch, it's like they just don't have a culture over there. No offence, Roscoe. Roscoe's got a good Twitch. You can check it out every night. Really good. www.twitch.tv forward slash Roscoe. Yeah, if you put that www in now. www.roscoe.tv dot twitch you don't have to put the www dot and you think people don't know what the world wide web is now they're like uh, exactly. where do i go to get these internet websites is that what it stands for i oh. started stand for whoa 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 <laughs> <laughs> dot twitch tv slash rascal <laughs> now that's the kind of good power you've got coming up if you are an ultra you're going to skip straight ahead to the episode if you're not an ultra you're going to have to listen to some adverts all apologies but we need to keep the engines here running we are sponsored by monkey barrel we are sponsored by couple other things that you'll hear about if you're not um uh, an ultra but ultras get access to free episodes and all that shit so i'm this, sure that's covered this podcast sponsored by carbon dioxide i've been huffing carbon dioxide for a long time and look at me do i have any pranks wrong with my bib new idea carbonara <laughs> dioxide <laughs> thank you so much for listening peace and love after the break and before the break meatloaf this week, we are sponsored by Manscaped. They are the long-term Enjoy an Album sponsor. They provide the best uh, pubic hair trimming uh, 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 services. Surely Not that services. isn't what you usually say. <laughs> 
Yeah. Don't, the best they thing about actually, Lord of the Rings, they instance. actually avoid the word pubic, I think, because it's a bit gross. Whereas I'm wanted to bring it back and say, hey, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Look, Let, you need to bring, shave your pubes. Let's bring pubes back. Yeah. <laughs> but Absolutely. in reverse. Yeah, let's bring the word pubes back, but let's shave pubes away using Manscaped product like the lawnmower. Yeah. Um, lawnmower 2.0, I believe we're on now. It's got a little light. It's uh, chargeable with a USB-C, same as your phone. It works in the shower. It's very quick to have a whip around downstairs to make you look nice and good. Your genitals are going to go from a 6.5. They're going to go from Inches. A- <laughs> <laughs> we can't say the manscape will give you a bigger dick, but we are inferring it. But it, it. looks like it. Yeah, it does look like it. That's the whole point. It's crazy. It's wild, actually. You have a shave, you look because up, you're trees like... trees don't look bigger in winter than in autumn. <laughs> <laughs> but... The Earth looks bigger, I think. I don't know how Sarah works. Uh, so we're, we are uh, sponsored by Manscaped. We have a code. If you follow the link and type in album20, you'll get 20% off, okay? Uh, so do that. Get your balls looking good for whoever wants to look at them, including yourselves. Balls, cock, asshole, <laughs> nose, ear, cock. <laughs> Check it out. Trim it hard. Enjoy Love the it. episode. You're listening to Enjoy an Album, the podcast where two comedians listen to some of the greatest albums of all time. The combination of whacked out songwriter Jim Steinman's horny pocket symphonies and Meatloaf's leather lunged operatic howl was unstoppable and untoppable. The hits will continue to resonate for the next thousand years. Your children's children's children will know all the words to Paradise by the Dashboard Light and two out of three ain't bad. A perfect melange of 1950s teenage death ballads, Broadway pomp and head-caving hard rock bat was created in a long gone world where rock and roll gods stomped the earth and no one stomped heavier than meat loaf. The term classic rock was practically invented for this record. How would you feel about that blurb? Uh, I thought it was good. I thought you read a bit of it weird. What about that? <laughs> you, it was like uh, thunder lungs or something like that. It was thunder like, lunged. <laughs> it was like you took you, you added a, a space in where there shouldn't have been a space. It's you know, called a dramatic pause. But it's thank called you. reading badly. But um, great blurb, that, yeah, great blurb. That was from, I believe, Louder Than Sounds ranked the best meatloaf records of all time, and uh, this was number one. And then Bow Hell Two was number two. Yeah, yeah. that's how that's how numbers work. That's, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> well, that's not chronological. That's like their idea of what's good and what's bad. Listen, we are listening opinion. this week to Battle Hill 1977 by Meat Loaf. I'm sitting here with Rascal McBelland himself, Roscoe McClelland. The king of punk in exile. The king of punk in exile. Why were you exiled from the punk community? Because <laughs> a, a lot of bands have been exiled from the punk community recently, actually. Yeah, actually, they get exiled for bad reasons. Uh, Why, just, you've been exiled for the same reasons? No, I get exiled because I was actually too punk. Oh, you know, they said uh, they don't want me at the punk conventions anymore. They mm. said this guy's being too punk. They said it. They said this guy's being too punk. <laughs> it's interesting you, you say you're too punk for punk because uh, 1977, arguably the birth of punk, and yet this record that you've chose to listen to, um, by hell by meatloaf, yeah. not a punk record. The opposite. People would say this is what punk was meant to kill. Being punk isn't about listening to punk. Being <laughs> punk is about doing whatever you want to do, you know? Living that uh, anti-lifestyle. The anti-lifestyle? The anti-lifestyle, yeah. It's called death. Wow. Look it up. <laughs> okay, sick. When was the first time you ever heard that? By hell? And I should clarify the reason. You didn't even pick this, really. I said, hey, Liam can't make it this week. Pull in the emergency plunger. What? <laughs> yeah. We don't pull in a plunger. You push on a plunger? Well, you push it to get it. And then you pull. Are you try to plumb splain? You plumb splain? <laughs> you're plumb splain to a plumb splain to a plumber? Man. Plumber in XL. Plum king in XL. I'm the plum king in XL as well. <laughs> king of plums. Been exiled for a lot of things, you know. <laughs> I'm starting to understand why. Wow. Um, 
you have a show. <laughs> did you tap me there? <laughs> I don't know if the mic's Do you, do you tap Liam a lot? <laughs> he doesn't like him when I touch him. He keeps still like, Tap me. Tap keep, me in the wrist. He keeps saying stop touching me. He says to me. Wow. What, uh, you have a show that you do that I was there at the very first one, I think. Mm. What's it called? Well, you weren't at the very, very first one. The very, very first one I'd done to nobody oh. in a room mm. for an hour. What happened? Explain. So you do a thing at comedy festivals where you sing all the words you know to the Meatloaf album by Hell. Yeah, the show is called Man Sings the Words That He Knows to the Meatloaf, Al- the Meatloaf album by Hell. And... Uh, some people turn up expecting there to be something different, but that is what it is. Well, it's like some people do stunt shows like a gorilla in a rocking chair. That's it. Yeah. This is one of those things that's uh, just for some, you know, sometimes you do a joke that's like, this isn't for an audience, this is for me because mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a show that's just for me. I don't care if there's anyone there. I tell people what's going on uh, to their face. No, like flyers or anything like that. What's the show called? Man sings the words he knows to the Meatloaf album, Bat Out of Hell. Can you give me a rough, a, a, a rough history of it? Well, uh, it started in Adelaide years ago. And uh, what was it? it started in Adelaide years ago and I had sold no tickets to a show. Mm, the Red Room. The Red Room in the Austral Hotel. And I just thought, you know what? God damn it, man. I've got this room for an hour. I'm going to do something that makes me happy. And I just put on... Bat out of hell, mm-hmm. and I just sang it, man, to the room in the darkness. And I was in there for an hour, singing through the whole album. And yeah. at the end, I was like, "What a good use of an hour! <laughs> what a good use of a room!" Yeah, <laughs> I smashed that, man. You know, and I was like, "That was really good." I was like, oh, uh, "People would have probably liked to have seen that." And then I, I told other people I, I cancelled a night later on that festival, and I told other people like comics and uh, an audience from like uh, a gig I'd just done that was going to go out in that room I was like I'll be there anyway doing this if you want to be there walk in for free I'll be doing it what's more punk than that what's more punk than that mm. finding a space and filling it with meatloaf exactly yeah it's like dinner so you done it in Adelaide you done it the Edinburgh Fringe done it in Edinburgh once yeah when, uh, a, lo- a load of Irish people came in mm. and uh, at the start after like the first two songs, where I'm not talking, I'm just saying meatloaf. This guy's like, "What the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. This is is this all it is?" <laughs> it says it on the label though. Yeah, well, I wasn't really on a label. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Just uh, and then Unsigned. see by the end of it, that guy, a couple pints deep, he was like, "This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life." Wow. Yeah, he was from Ireland. You yeah. can probably tell by the accent. Do it again. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you seen that video Blind Boy just put up of uh, Killian Murphy in a, a film called uh, Disco Pigs? And he's a guy for Cork, but there's something about the Cork accent where it can be like confused for the Jamaican accent. And he's saying all this stuff about... He's walking up to two people who are like kissing in a park and he's going, oh, you want to flap at the tits in the face and you want to get your knobs loved and all this stuff. It's crazy. Are you talking about another podcast on your podcast? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Podcastception. Oh, you never talk about another Twitch stream on your Twitch stream? You ever talk about Lemmy's Twitch or 1030's Twitch on your Twitch? No, specifically not. Wow, that's interesting. Why would I do that? I don't know. Do you think Coke walk around going, oh, have you guys drank Pepsi? <laughs> it's not really the same, I think. I think Maid exactly probably talks about Panda Pops on their podcast. The podcast. I've not had either Limeade or Panda Pops for years, you know? Did you ever see that... Um, Princess Diana Memorial flavoured Panda Pop. No, I did not. Check it out. What what flavour was it though? What did it taste I like? I wouldn't care to speculate. You can't speculate? <laughs> I wouldn't care to speculate. You wouldn't care to speculate? I can speculate. I'm not saying I cannot speculate. I'm saying I would not care to speculate. I would guess bubblegum. I would guess like close to sweat. Sweat? Yeah. Why? Everyone, everyone was sweating. <laughs> everyone was sweating when Diana died. When was probably the first time you heard the... Um, uh, Hell by Meatloaf. I thought you were going to ask when was the first time I heard Diana died. <laughs> when was that? Like 1995? Okay, my dad cried. And I was like, I've never seen this before. I've never seen my dad crying before. <laughs> Why is he crying about Diana? I'm like, did he know her? New segment, sad dad. <laughs> sad dad, when was your dad sad? We need to find out what his problem is. Sad dad, it's the first time he's cried at all. 
I like your dad better than us. Yeah, yeah. When has your dad cried? Couldn't care speculate. <laughs> I think I've any funny ones, but it's mostly just really sad stuff. Oh. It's not like <laughs> Princess Diana's dead, which is embarrassing. <laughs> My dad cries when it matters. Well, now that we're having a dad off. She was the princess of our hearts, right? And if that's not going to make you cry, then she didn't deserve what happened to her, you know what I mean? She didn't deserve to get killed by the queen. When was the f- I agree that that's what happened, but when when was the first time you heard, is that something you and your dad would cry about when he was where we was probably listening to this record? I uh, couldn't care to speculate. <laughs> Don't use my own kung fu on me. I'm using it, man. That's the no you of the words world, <laughs> which is also just no you. Um, did you listen to this when you were a wee guy? Why did you pick that album that night at the, in Adelaide when you were going to, you had to sing one album? You could have picked anything. It's a screamer of an album, right? It's just back to front, top to bottom, you know, side to side, this album, every track rocks and one after the other. Like, do you know what? Some albums you're like, Oh, they've just thrown their songs in order. But this album like seems like it feels like every song does something. Like there's a pacing to that yeah, full yeah, album yeah, all the yeah, way through yeah, yeah. that just it picks up and just drops off at the, the right times. Yeah. Did you have this on C D? Yeah, I actually, actually bought you this um a couple of years ago for Christmas. Uh this is the record label. This is the vinyl here. We are vinyl. You can claim your download if you've got a, a creative Zoom that you want to pick full of MP3s. I've already got this downloaded, you know. I've, <laughs> I've got, well, I've got it. I've I've bought the album digitally, and mm-hmm. I also have Apple Music, so I can listen to it anytime I want. I can listen to it two ways on my phone on the same app. How about that? That's sick. You like that? We listen to it on your phone on the way here. Yeah. You could, you hooked up your phone to the car. To the car. I just fixed that car radio as well. It's good. It was broken for a wee while, oh. uh, like a couple of days. But do you know what I done? Right, it, it, it would either cost me two hundred and fifty quid to replace it with like a new aftermarket touchscreen mm-hmm. thing, uh, which I wasn't even sure would work. But it turns you out, don't have fingers. <laughs> yeah, don't have fingers. No fingerprints on me, you know. But I. Uh, You're not a corporeal being. I took the uh, uh, the corporal. <laughs> uh, I've not been in the army. I, I took the fuses out and put new fuses in, and it sprung them back into life. So there you go. Yeah. Little tip. Wow. You, you took the Ford Focus MK3. You took the electricity right out of the machine, as they say. So yeah, I uh, <laughs> I got you this for Christmas. Yeah. I got it in Morrison's, which you wouldn't really associate with buying vinyl records in the year 2019. No, you would not. This was before Corona virus. What about the year 3019? I tell you what, you'd be buying one of Busted's eight albums at that point, probably. What, what happened in that song? I took a trip to the year 3000. This song had gone multi-platinum. Everybody bought our seventh album. So you've got to assume that by the year um, 30, 19, mm-hmm. you know, they'll have released at least one more album. Do you think that um, they stay, but they didn't stay there, they came back? No. You think so? You think that maybe they went back again to the year 3000? Maybe they go every year as a kind of holiday did they meet themselves in the video like older versions of themselves they'd be really old yeah yeah do you know what i think is crazy i like how they're like not much has changed but we live under war and you're like oh my god it's actually god. a good song right everything's changed it's really funny yeah not much has changed but we live under water <laughs> and i've got eight cocks on my back but it's pretty similar. It's pretty similar. Do you yeah. know Jonas Brothers covered that? So Clint's in America, I know that song, but they think it's a Jonas Brothers song. Wow, that's, that, that is crazy, you know, to think. The, the Jonas Brothers, are they, are they still virgins? They're no, not they, virgins anymore. I've had sex with them. Right, great. Once. Oh, <laughs> Menage Quattro? Menage Pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> Pentagon Junior. <laughs> I fucked a, a ninja wrestler. But yeah, it's good, good, uh, good vinyl. You like vinyl? Yeah, good, good. That's what I think. Good, good, good. good vinyl. Yeah, uh, I, I like the idea of vinyl. I like uh, thinking about how it's made. Big blob pressed down. Licorice mm. pizza, they call it. Do they? Yeah, mm. it's called in the seventies. But but what if it's not black? Because you get different ones or get different vibes. I've seen a, a vinyl. Is it as well? <laughs> Listen, I've seen a. 
I've seen a, a, a vinyl, <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's what licorice all sorts are, isn't it? Yes. I hate them, man. We Bertie. They're stinking. Bertie Bassett. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you that right now, man. You get like the little, you get a little like, nice, like tasting, like little balls on the outside, and then you get this stinking licorice in the middle. I like the bits that are like wee cubes with lines on them, like purple cubes with lines. They are actually good. They're the only bit. Mm. They're the only good bit. Oh, that's the good thing about bit. Uh, Barry Bass's licorice all sorts is there's all sorts of them. it's all sorts something for everybody and I think you could say the same about this record yeah as long as you like operatic <laughs> yeah eight minute long songs We're about right line, oh, I love you. yeah Great I feel stuff. like that <laughs> <laughs> you're like how can a guy that big hit these notes man it's crazy we, we but then do you think about most opera singers we do a wee thing on this podcast called well, i don't think you got how well, did you listen to this when you were a wee guy is this a big change what this podcast yeah nah do you listen to this record when you were a wee guy well here's the thing right the first time i ever heard that meatloaf um it was a uh, in like this old old uh like cd playing unit that my dad had right purely hi-fi hi-fi yeah oh God, it was like... Uh, the fidelity um, was tall, man. Big speakers, loads of buttons, little knobs to twiddle, you mm -hmm. know, you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I uh, accidentally had, like, turned it up to, like, full blast. Because you think, it's crazy, like, most... See, with most stuff, like TVs and stuff, I'm not going more than 25% loud. Yeah. But they can go. Now, my dad was, like, a music guy, mm -hmm. you know? He's the music man. He was in a band? No, he was the music man. Oh. He comes from far away. Oh, down your way? Blantyre. Oh. Do you think the music man comes from, not to dox your dad, but do you think the music man comes from Daddy Doxed. down the way? Yeah, he comes from down he your does way. Be crying again. <laughs> he does. He does it. The music man doesn't come from far away. He comes from down your way. I am the music man. I come from far away. That's what can you it. play? That's not I it. play the drums. Well, Jamie, can we bring this up? Can we get that up, Jamie? But it's not Jamie. Oh, sorry. That's not Joe Rogan. You need to do your own jamie -ness. Oh, God. Roscoe, can Here's I bring the thing, this up? right? Here's why I prefer my interpretation of the Music Man. It's because if the Music Man came from down your way, you would already be aware of him and he wouldn't have to explain himself. But because he comes from far away, he has to go, I come from far away. What can you play? Well, this will be new information because we don't live near each other. I play the trumpet. What if um, it's just some? Because, you know, we live in a society nowadays where people don't really get to know their neighbours. So <laughs> People say that, but I know all my neighbours now. Yeah, well, that's... I've been in that flat for six years and we can really go on. That's the issue. <laughs> if you know all your neighbours, you're the issue. What are you looking... You've been on your phone for about 10 seconds and you haven't done anything. You're just looking at your different apps. I was trying... I'm, I'm trying to check my stocks. <laughs> Swiping and swapping. I'm trying to check my stocks and shares. Blue A thing. Well, I don't even know what Blue A app is. It's on well, my phone. Listen, I don't know what it is. Listen. What are you looking up? Give I'm trying. Phone. I'm trying to figure out about this music man. He's got ADHD and he's trying to look at the likes to have a music man. He's not even managed you it. ADHD and daddy has dick. Yeah, your, your daddy has uh, dry eyes. You wish you'd had ADHD, man. I don't understand <laughs> what you said there. <laughs> you, have AD, you wish you had ADHD and daddy has dry eyes. Right. Oh, right, right. I see. Because your dad's crying all the time. I understand it now. So you had a big CD player with your dad, a big H, a big uh, hi-fi. Big bananas boxes, right? All the B ones. It was a big boy, right? And mm -hmm. I turned it up and then I accidentally pressed it on. And it just, right me here. Ah! Heart. It, heart. It, was, it was the loudest thing I'd heard at yeah. that point. You know, you're a wee guy, you get a fright or something. I was like, never do that again. Never listen to that. But it was meatloaf that was in it. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you 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 grow older, you hear like uh, and you're like, wow, this is a this is a full on jamming bop, mm -hmm. you know? And that's just the radio edit. And then you go, hold on, there's like eight more minutes of this <laughs> that doesn't need to be in it. You can say that about a lot of the songs in this record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can. You can say that about that. But it's then long. once you get the whole thing, man, Jim Steinman, what a genius, you know? What I don't know. Genius, Maybe man. if you're not familiar with the Meatloaf floor up top, it says Meatloaf by Out of Hell, Out the Bottom, songs by Jim Steinman. Yeah. So Meatloaf doesn't write music. Yeah. A lot of times in the interviews, they'll be like, yeah, I guess I said to Jim about a girl I was... You know, crazy about in high school, and then you talk to Jim Steinman about it, and he's like, "I thought, what if she was talking to a wolf, <laughs> yeah. and it wanted to fuck her?" 
Yeah. I thought, let's write a 20 minute operatic song about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But like, uh, we love that write anything. He's just an actor, really, isn't he? He was in, well, he was in the Rocky Horror Picture Show and he was in. Um, Hair, the musical, and he was like in Fight Club after this. Like he's yeah. more of a, he's a great singer, but he's like, he's like, and he's an actor. Well, here's the thing, you know, I would say that Jim Steinman is the uh, John, Paul, and George to <laughs> Meatloaf's Ringo because he wrote the songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ringo, Ringo wrote some of the songs. Meatloaf well, didn't. What? Ringo wrote some songs. I'd Jim. like to be under the sea. In an octopus's garden. Yeah, we've shade. already heard that. Under the sea. It's a Little Mermaid, <laughs> you know what I mean? Do something new. I don't, I think, I think Henry Go was before Little Mermaid Man, doesn't he? You think so? Yeah. Well, I don't want to Jamie, get... can we bring that up? Stop. <laughs> can we, we get that? We don't have, we don't do that. Want um, to talk about other podcasts? We can talk about the podcasts for sure. Right. Just not a bad one. I love the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually listen to podcasts that much? No, I don't. You're more of a... You say not much. You mean at all? Well, I'm trying to think of something you do listen to. No. Operation Mincemeat, the podcast? No. Huh. No. <laughs> no. Never heard Why do you not like the format? What, the format of your podcast? No, I podcast? I realise this is a very personal question. You're like, why do you not like the format of podcast, but secretly mine? No, podcast? I don't care about the listening to mine. I mean, I, I listen to your pod, live podcast you do every night on Twitch. You know? I've got my own thoughts. Yeah. I don't like listen to someone else's. I actually think that as well, honestly. Because now I've quit smoking, I don't have that uh, thought in my head that's like, hey, smoke. Look at your cigarettes, get one. Light it up, put it in your mouth. And you're smoking it. You go, yeah. Think about the next one. You got enough? You got enough for next time? Go get more. I've kind of got that head out of my brain. And now I'm thinking about different stuff all the time. Well, that's it, you know? That's it. Like, what do I do with my time? You know, you've, you've got... You've got I'm doing my own podcast twenty four seven. I think podcasts are for people who don't. You know, they say people don't. They say like, oh, people don't slag off the ultras. You sounds... know, people don't have like a, a, a an inner monologue. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I've got an inner monologue running the whole time. And I'm like, maybe maybe podcasts are designed for people who don't have an inner monologue. That is true. But yeah. That's it. I actually use other podcasts to shut out my inner monologue. I've got. So a, I'll put Playboy on. When I go to sleep, and then I'll be talk, like thinking about all his stuff, and I'm not thinking about my stuff. Listen, I've, try that. I, I'm dropping outer mega logs <laughs> in the toilet, if you know what yeah, I'm saying. Big time, for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, so you were a wee boy, you had this on a high five. I had a high five, my dad had this high five that he mm. gave me. And that's what I listened to when I was a teenager. Yeah. And it was like cassette player at the bottom, two chunky cassette players here. Oh, yeah. Left side, right side. Then CD player with like pitch shifting capabilities. Yeah, you shift that pitch. You could make Ozzy Osbourne... Sound like yeah. weird. Like that's how he sounds nowadays. Yeah, huh? since that quad bike accident for sure. Yeah, <laughs> he went off the rails in a crazy quad. <laughs> we don't even have that on a quad on a rail. Um, R.I.P. A lot of people have had these quad bike accidents. Where else did that happen to? Someone who died recently had the quad. They got quadded up. Oh yeah, someone did get quadded up recently. Who mm. got quadded? It's like a metal legend that I'm like, keep this vehicle away for these boys. Yeah. These... Why are you letting a 60-year-old guy go on a quad bike? Yeah. Why are you letting a 60-year-old guy go on any bike? You seen that uh, Joe Biden on a bike? <laughs> no. Get that man off that bike, man. <laughs> you see Mitch McConnell just shut down? Yeah. That was sick. I know how it feels, man. I've done a few gigs where I've just been like, I could just walk away here. He couldn't walk away, that was the thing. Yeah, he, he just shut stopped, down. man. Man never been a monkey when he shut down, man. That guy was fucking shut down. You're going to have to cut. Liam's going to be like, ah, we've got to cut this out. Why? Because what if it comes out that he's had a, a terrible stroke? Good. I hope he dies. All right, cool. Is he a bad guy? Eh? Yeah. Is he a baddie? Yeah. He's not like a fun old guy who shut down. He was like a, he's like had so much evil goo running in his black veins. Right. Well, let's poke him, with, poke him with sticks. And watch it all pour out. Like, uh, who's that guy you're afraid of? Oh. Oogie Boogie. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the other thing that I'm afraid of? Bulger? Yeah. The, no, we've done that last podcast. We're talking about <laughs> we're talking about the other thing you're afraid of. Right. The Oogie Boogie Man for the Nightmare Before Christmas. Do you know what I think? It's so my crazy bugs, that, my bugs! I think it's so crazy that uh, John Venables and Terry Venables are actually related. And you think about the different trajectories in their lives. Secret Pasho, Secret Secret Pasho. You do it fast and it feels like not show. Got no, no, no that, money, you, you got dash bro. Secret Pasho. Is that the theme tune for that? Yeah. Oh my god. But this god, last time. Man. 
You know, no, like that? I don't remember that theme tune. I tell you rap. I hate that. Secret pot show, secret, secret pot show. You do it fast and it feels like not show. Got no money. You got that small secret pot show. I think we done a punk version for you last time, but. Can I try one? You want to try one? Yeah. Or the secret pot show theme tune? Yeah. Go. Secret pot show, where are they from? Wonder who made them born. Mm. Their mommy and daddy have a lot of money. Maybe. How's that? That's kind of Morrissey esque. It's kind of Smithsy. You like that? Mm. I think that's better. Okay. <laughs> he was born the son of Wilma Arty. I knew it! <laughs> A school teacher and member of the Voodoo Udo Girls Gospel Music Quartet. The Voodoo Girls? No. <laughs> the Voodoo Udo Girls. The Voodoo Udo I wasn't girl? just saying Voodoo weird. <laughs> it's like spelled like that. It's like V O D I O D O. Oh. V I O D O D O. Vodio do. Um, and his dad was Orvis Wesley a day. I knew it! <laughs> a former police officer who went into business selling a homemade cough remedy with his wife. Oh my god, well, no wonder Meatloaf's pipes are so good, man. That guy's never coughed in his life. <laughs> well, I would say, um, you know, we kind of work out as somebody's dad, you know, have they used industry connections? Or obviously his mum's part of a voodoo-themed gospel quartet. Mm. But I feel like if your Aren't dad's making homemade cowpaw, you're probably not from old money. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. From that new cowpaw money. <laughs> you from from <laughs> new farmer, small farmer, with your dad's in the back, grinding up nettles and going, am I still coughing? <laughs> <laughs> mortar and pestle <laughs> that's i never even thought about that the fact that if you were testing out your own homemade cough remedies you would have to get the cough going back once you've sorted it as well uh, yeah how do you make yourself cough you know oh, throat punch? how do we all make ourselves cough you know we do that cinnamon challenge <laughs> who was that guy who was like uh he was like the old guy old guy cinnamon challenge was it christopher hitchens or something uh, it like was, an old it scientist, was Christopher MacArthur Boyd. It was you, <laughs> What's it mean? thirty years in the future, <laughs> doing the so cinnamon challenge. You and Busty were hanging about after their fifth album. It's crazy. Not much had changed, but we were above water at that point. Yeah, still just above water. I wonder if Meatloaf's dad cried when Princess Diana died. Oh, do, you th- <laughs> do you think? <laughs> do you think uh, that Busty song is actually a very uh, early uh, comment on climate change? Yeah, hmm. people knew about. I don't want to get too into climate change because a lot of our listeners deny it, but people... <laughs> people Enjoy an album, <laughs> hate the planet. <laughs> well, I fucking deny it, I'll tell you that much. Because, um, you know, uh, Meatloaf opened up in the early days for The Who, Alice Cooper, Grateful the who? Dead, The Who, Van who? Morrison's band, Them, The Stooges. Them? Yeah, and then he was on tour with uh, John... He was John Belushi's understudy on a National Lampoon uh, musical tour, and that's when he met Jim Steinman, who would record this record, and Ellen Foley, who would do it with him on Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Ellen or Foley? Ellen Foley. Ellen, Ellen Foley? Or... Mick Foley's mum? Mick Foley's mum, yeah. Ellen Foley's baby boy? Like about how hell he fell off the top of that cage, man. Oh, great. Uh, you know, I hate when... Because uh, every now and then, I see people going like, Oh, he's sick of talking about it, so he doesn't talk about it anymore. And then you like, talk about Foley? Yeah, and they're like, oh, he's back talking about it, so he yeah. talks about it again. Like, oh, he's sick of talking about it. I'm like, you mate, talk about it every day. No offense to Mick Foley, but I feel like his willingness to speak about the Hell in a Cell match really depends on what the bank account's looking like. <laughs> I think when it's quite, you know, he's 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 paying all his bills. He's like, I can't be asked talking about that. And then you know, he's like, I've got my new Christmas ornaments. It's really any Christmas, that guy. That's a huge red flag. You um, you ever hear about any of the shit that Meatloaf said about how he thinks... Oh, you're just moving away from Mick Foley red flags, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to stay in that wrestling world, do you? I'm not in the wrestling world. You're in the, re- you're in the wrestling world. I'm not. Yeah, I you, wish I was. You're in it. I'm not. You're more than that, man. I would say. More than that? Do you want to uh, hear about my, my project I've got planned? What is it? It is... Uh, I actually told you about this in the way here. So it's ruining it for you, but for the, the it's ultras, a good idea. Good idea. Gonna love it. Tell the ultras. It is uh, like a kind of pop punk slash meatloaf, uh, you know, amalgamation band. It's going to be called Yumi at Loaf. Yumi at Loaf. Yeah. We're going to do songs like, Well, I got your picture and I'm coming with you, but I will do anything for love, but I won't do this. So you're doing kind of mashups between yeah, mashups. Pop, and you're not just doing Yumi 6 because you don't know any Yumi 6 songs. No, I don't. I don't I've never listened to Yumi 6. <laughs> Me neither. 
Lisa. It's okay, it's man, for sure. Yeah. Maybe come back on with talk about that for an hour. But um, you mean sex? I think I'd, I'd rather do a project where it's like covers of Meatloaf and the style of pop punk. Right. I do anything for love, but I won't wait till you're of age. You know, wait, wait, stuff that, like that. Yeah, it's like. Would I do anything for love, but I won't do that. Is that a newfound glory? I don't know the songs because I'm not a fucking cat house pedo, so I don't actually know a lot of these songs. I'm wow. not saying you are one. Wow. I'm saying that you sold drugs to them when you were so, younger. So what type of pedo are you if you're not a cat house one? <laughs> Just a regular street one? That's good, that you, that's good that your uh, pedo energy cannot be contained by one mountain. <laughs> I'm not any type of pedo. Wow. I'm not a pedo. I'm hearing a lot of stuff for the first time, and let me tell you, callers, I'm freaked out about it. I feel like I heard a lot of these songs for the first time this week. You took the words out of my mouth. What was that bit to the start? Can you do that bit? What? The wolf stuff. The wee monologue at the start of that song. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's hard because, I mean, like, because I do the show, man sings the words he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't know to the meatloaf album Bat of Hell. So I don't know a lot of the words, but it's like uh, on a hot summer night, <laughs> would you offer your throat to the wolf with the red roses? And there's a woman there, she's going, Yes. Yes. And he's like, Would you offer him? Would you offer it? No, and then she goes like, Will he offer me its teeth? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Will he offer me its jaws? Yes. Again. Yes. Wait. Again. Yes. Wait. Oh, sorry. Still, she said, again. Wait. I haven't done this but, up much. Are you the wolf? Yes. <laughs> Wait, I don't think you are the wolf. You're the guy speaking on behalf of the wolf. Yes. You're the Paul Heyman to Brock Lesnar. You're the you're the Paul Heyman and the wolf is Brock Lesnar. You're, you're the advocate for the, yes. the wolf. Again. Will he offer me his jaws? Yes. And does he love me? Yes. And will he starve without me? Yes. I love that bit where he gets impatient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. I bloody told you. Now let's fuck. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's straight in the song. It's great. It's great stuff. <laughs> I'm, uh, I got really into like, looking into like, Jim Steinman. Are you ever looking into this guy? Uh, He's a weird guy. You mean have I ever looked physically into him? <laughs> no, have you ever like... Um, I've never met him. Heard like, about him or looked straight up in his butthole, shined a light down his mouth to see if I could see through him like a tunnel. Yeah. You ever tried that with someone? No. That doesn't work. No. There's all kinds of stuff in there. A lot of corners in the body. Gooey bits. Mm, chewy bits. <laughs> you ever looked into James Damon? He's, uh, he's an interesting guy. He's uh, he's got a, he's pretty fat and he's got sunglasses on and he's got long white hair and he wears one glove. Don't we all? Leather jacket. Actually kind of reminds me of you. So he's like reverse Michael Jackson? He is the reverse Michael Jackson for sure. That's cool. And that, um, yeah, he's got one glove. Maybe he's like all the parts that Michael Jackson wasn't. <laughs> Do you think Michael Jackson took parts from Jim Steinman? No. <laughs> and, well, if he's got one glove on, Michael Jackson took the other glove? Yeah, it's interesting. Took the other hand. I, um, so yeah, he's got one glove and he's got a leather jacket. And he said that a lot of the stuff on this record was like um, him... Do you know that song, um, Two Out of Three in Bed? Yeah. He was listening to the Elvis song, I Love You, I Want You, and Love You. No, I Want You, I Need You, I Love You by Elvis. Mm. And someone was like, why can't you write a song like this? Instead of writing big eight minute songs <laughs> that don't have like too many bits. And he was like, all right. And he just went home and he was like, what if it was, I want you, I need you, but I don't love you. Yeah. That's, no, that's, that's, that's more realistic. <laughs> That's if you're watching it there. That's more realistic, right? Because people do want to fuck, but not everyone wants to love. And I think that's what life is all about. Sometimes, but then sometimes also not. You've been in a monogamous relationship with your wife for a long time. Wow, you're talking about my mahogany relationship. <laughs> It's not a mahogany relationship. <laughs> you don't know we've got a lot of that stuff. I don't know. I, was, I don't want to um, speculate, but I can't speak to that person. We get in bed, we paint each other like a mahogany shade and we line X each other without moving. Really not acceptable in this day and age. But what I will say is um, it is interesting because if you look to this album cover, you'll be like, oh, this album's about maybe a demon bike who is, you know, ridden about by this hero guy, but 
the you know kind of like the symbiote story in spider-man like maybe the, the the bike is like an evil demon and it takes people to hell and back and stuff and like oh who's this guy big demon in the background that's big, the bat the big bat yeah yeah, is it bad actually? Yeah, I never even thought yeah. about that. The bad whole, out of hell. What you can re- really, you can just disregard all the rest of this, and that is just the bad who's out of hell. Out of hell. <laughs> and then there's a the motorbike and all these graves. Like the bad out of hell, I've been just sitting around the graveyard. By the way, we're discussing the album cover, but we have an album cover theme tune. We take a look at the album art and we decide if it is good or not. Oh, oh, no, no. Is there more to it? That's it. Oh fuck! You've got to finish it up. Do you have any? Do you have any theme tunes for us for that? Because Liam doesn't actually like the. Well, ha, well the how dream about, sleeves. You do that bit again, and I'll try and finish it off. Because you, you can't do just well, one done, bit of green sleeves. We done one. No, you can. We done one. You can. <laughs> we done one good one. Well, we kind of harmonized on it. If you want to do the lower or go even higher than I'm doing. All right. Well, you start. Now. We take a look at the album art and we decide if it is good or not. That's no. no. You need to have the second bit in it. All right, you do my bit then. Right, you, no, you do your bit because you know the lyrics and then I'll yeah. finish it off. But I want somebody to go. We take a look. Right, I'll just. I don't know the the words <laughs> though, but I'll just. I'll just. I'll base. What it do you think the words are? I don't know, play something stupid. Right. Let's, you, you, t- <laughs> you, you, like, uh, one. Do you want me write down the words? Two. No. <laughs> three. <laughs> four. We do, take do, a look do, at the do, album do, art do, and we do, decide do, if do, it do, is do, good do, or fart. Do, that was it. enjoy an album we're here to see. We hope you have a nice day. Nice. That's how you finish it off. Like, like, Here's like. Christopher Liam's not here. <laughs> Fell down a well, oh dear. The people who didn't like the last episode with Roscoe are not in for a good week. But the one person like it, on YouTube, didn't one person like on it. YouTube didn't like it. Yeah, they were like, "Who is this punk man? <laughs> is this guy exiled this time?" Yeah, they're like, "Get, he shouldn't be on a punk thing. He's punk king in exile. This plumber in exile, get him down. Fuck man." Um, but I think it's interesting because I was looking up this album and it was like, "Oh, about hell the song." That's on a collection of like Halloween songs, and mm-hmm. I was like, you know, it's not, isn't, it's not about bats or hell. Yeah, it's like it's like about hell. Although most of the album is about like um, wanting to be a bit of a fuckboy. You know, it's about wanting to slam and jam in the back of a car, but not wanting to commit to a relationship and tell someone they love you. But you know, the 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 design and like it's kind of held up as this kind of epic rock story but it's just about riding a motorbike and getting your knobs locked yeah you think so no i think that's great i was just like i was i was leaving uh space for the the listeners to laugh there <laughs> no, not an issue on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> what songs you like listener laughs a lot of podcasts don't do that you know they say something and then they just barge right through it you know i think this is this podcast should be you, you think have, it should you have, have a to, sitcom style audience yeah, you need to allow them to laugh before you move on to the next thing. That was more of a hot take than a laugh line, I would say. That was more of me making a good point. About that was it was funny, you, you, you know. You, Knob slobs you, a funny Yeah, time. you went on this, like, uh, it seemed like it was going somewhere really good, and then it was just a fucking sucking off joke at the end. <laughs> it's not a sucking off joke, it's a sucking off truth. Again, I've left time for them to laugh. You know? <laughs> Hope you're laughing along at home. Here's what I would say. Or Don't. on transport, <laughs> whatever you listen to your podcasts. Here's what I would say: Don't do that, because um, it's just not it's not what we're doing. So we don't need to put that. On. <laughs> we don't need to put pussy in. I've asked you a question, which was: What kind of songs do you like on this? Oh, you asked me a question. Yeah. What, what's your favorite songs on this? Um, you showed me this album before. After we after you done that uh, one, and uh, I was like, "Whoa, this album's really good." When you sang it. Um, and I was like, I'd never even fucking heard the two or three in bed or Parad- well, Paradise, but that's where Light hadn't heard. A lot of people don't, probably wouldn't give All Revved Up with No Place to Go. It's you props, man. It's Credence. Yeah, but see, at the end, man, it's like... Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it just fucking hits that man till the end. Ripped up with no place to go. And then, bow, it's all yeah. done, man. And yeah. then it's like, oh, what's next, man? <laughs> Two out of three ain't bad. Let's bring that piece right back down again. You, what you, how long? What do is do next do after that? What's next after? This is the order. Oh, that's the order, is it? Yeah. Or oh, you think you know the album, do you? Yeah, I looked up on Wikipedia when we were driving here. Right, good. Jamie, can we bring that up? Can we get that up? <laughs> we don't need to some jaw. I've got I got a jaw in Ryman's <laughs> for 39p. I've wrote it in it. You don't need to put stuff on the screen. It looks like it's 39p, I'll tell you that. Oh fucking you don't even know how to read or write, man. And you're fucking telling this is what you're covering. I'm I literally have the track list numbered here and you're going, oh what comes next? Because you're just you're just pretending well, you know how you, to read. You've written down You one, don't know two, how to read. You've written down one, two, three, four, and then you've made a line and you've started one, two, three again. <laughs> it's so. the final record, that's the first four tracks. And then you flip it, that's the three tracks, that's it. Which is how it's listed on Wikipedia. So shut the fuck up. Wow, that's stop bad. acting like you know how to read. That's and just bad. admit I've brought you here to trick you and it's showing people you don't know how to read. You fell in my trap. Shut the fuck up. I know how to read. What's your favourite bit in two or three and bad? I think it's quite a good record. Eh. Uh, to, what's my favorite two I want you. Mm-hmm. I need you. But there ain't no way I'm ever gonna love you. Now, now don't be sad. That's my favorite bit. No, be sad. Cause two out of three ain't bad. I mean, it's just. Apparently, they'll try to do an Eagles thing there, but I don't hear it. Another thing is, he was saying. I've never heard Eagles squat like that before. You mean the band? It's, it must have been so easy getting band names back in the, the day. Beatles, the, the Eagles, Beatles, the Eagles, Meat Loaf, them, them, Van Morrison's them. You know the Who, the Who. They've got all the names to go for. That's why you know why Lennon McCartney wrote so many f- bangers because they were the first people. They were the first write people songs. to write them. Yeah, yeah. like E A G D. Okay, I guess that's gonna sound good. Yeah, it was literally just Buddy Holly who would made songs before that. And like medieval guys with lutes and harpsichords yeah. and shit. I mean, if I made a Beatles song, if I made a song right now, it's like, baby, I would like to come to the shop and buy you a big fucking bottle of pop. Then we could go back to my room and kiss and stuff. And my mom is coming home. If I done that back in the 60s, people would be like, oh my God. He's talking about kissing and maybe fingering. This yeah. is crazy. A lot of that type of stuff on this record. A lot of hot banging and cars action. Do you know that the question... You like the bit where they do baseball stuff? Yeah, that's really yeah. good. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, man. Do you know they actually got Phil Risotto? The, the inventor of Risotto? <laughs> he invented Risotto. Wow, the guy who invented slow boiling rice. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, you God. probably cook a price though. You could get everything slow, man. You get that slow cooking, make porridge in it. Porridge, make... which takes about six minutes to make, you slow cooking porridge, man. I've never made porridge in that. You told me you did once. No, I didn't. You did. No, I didn't make porridge in it. Yeah. <laughs> pasta, I made pasta in the slow cooker. Right, well, he... <laughs> no, I didn't make pasta in the slow cooker, right? It was a dish where you made, like, a, a chicken and a kind of marinade sauce in it for yeah. ages, and then yeah. the last, like, ten minutes, you, put pasta you throw it. pasta in it. Yeah. <laughs> what was that laugh? A goofy laugh? Oh, you, you, you? Yeah, I'm goofy. You're oh, cooking pasta. Oh, slow gosh. I, oh, gosh. I love pasta, the slow cooker. You? <laughs> we need to rattle through these segments because I forgot. All oh, right. You got, well, a, did, rattle I, I, you got a YouTube comment? Did you find one? No, right. I forgot to look for one. Um, Why? Because can't I can't read. Can. Um, I found this one for two out of three in bed six months ago. A guy called Randy Thomas, thirty four seventy eight, said, "Good start." Was that his pin number? <laughs> Must be or his measurements. That one you was so special, so simple, yet I thought so complicated. The one love that would haunt me forever, and I'm even glad about. And who would have thought we reconnected after all those years? The love is just as real. At times only, it's more about reality. Responsibilities and miles are my excuse. 60 now. Kids grown. <laughs> End of comment. <laughs> 60 now. Kids grown. I should simply leave a letter and go to her. God knows I love her so deeply still. J L R. I'll love you forever and into eternity. 
I'm glad you know it now. Even better is, you still love me too. <laughs> <laughs> Who out here posting these YouTube comments, man? <laughs> My dad, man, he's talking about Princess Diana. <laughs> GLR, Jensen's <laughs> Liana. Really? <laughs> Jensen's Liana? Yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about. I, uh, do you know what it reminded me of? Like, uh, Gordon Street. Gordon Street. Ah, Gordon Street. Meatloaf was in um, Wayne's World. Was he? No. No. Fight Club. Fight Club. <laughs> it was I think the, he was in Wayne's World. World. No, it was not. It was, he was in Space World, the movie. He was the bus he was driver. In Space World, the movie, yeah. You're thinking Great actor. World. Chris Farley was in Wayne's World. And he was, was it Chris Farley? And mm -hmm. he was very, he was like, but I don't got no place else to go. <laughs> Yeah. I found that you can use do this unhinged YouTube comment if you want, if you don't like it, we can. Uh, this Juju comment? This unhinged YouTube comment. This un unhinged Juju comment from. Uh, <laughs> it's not an unhinged Juju comment. It's the Juju comment from uh, the Voodoo Gals. Go ahead. The Voodoo Audio Girls. Uh, Give it a read, Quinn. Well, I have to read this whole this whole thing or just the, 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 just the comment? Right. Uh, other songs by Jim Steinman. No, 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 no. It's the paragraph. I've done a bit. I've done a bit. I've done a bit yet. There are some songs that more than songs. Great start. <laughs> there are some songs that more than songs. They are the chords of life, the coal that burn the engine of your life, <laughs> the music that express how you feel. It lights that fire in your heart and makes you feel alive. This song gives me heart and strength beyond belief. Down with the forced headscarf. <laughs> And up with the freedom of the highway life. What have you done to me? You've you've thrown me under the fucking bus here. You've thrown me under the bus. Feel so lucky to be living in a non-Islamic country. You've thrown me under the bus. <laughs> thrown me under the bus. You threw me under the bus. No, it's you just make me get political. political. I'm not you make me get political. political. I'm going to have the nation Islam coming after me now because of, I've read that out. I don't think they were the ones that would have the issue with it. Feel so lucky to be living in a non-Islamic country? You think the nation of Islam Well, I will, going to have an issue I will with clip that? that bit out and make it look like you're just reading your own thoughts, but, you know, it's good. Thanks for helping me. This is why everybody hates podcasts, man. No you know? Everybody loves them. You know, Jamie, can we get the nation Islam no, up? Don't get them in. Other songs. Well, cool. you're saying get them out? Oh, is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that either. Wow. Other songs by James Diamond. Did you know No Matter What by Boyzone was written by James, James Diamond? I did know that. Chicka cha cha. Chicka cha. Ha ha. Yes. <laughs> you can really tell. It was like. Chicka cha. Ha ha. I'm in a castle tonight. Chicka cha. In the video? <laughs> and I'm on a motorbike. <laughs> chicka cha. And now I really need to fuck you. But I don't think I'd like. I can't believe that I'm Meatloaf. Meatloaf. But now I'm singing Meatloaf songs. Wow, wow. It's a crazy video where um, my girlfriend couldn't believe Ronan Keaton's singing voice. We watched it last night, the video. Um, which is filmed in the Roundhouse in London, the old Shakespearean theatre. Oh. And um, basically, Meatloaf, uh, not Meatloaf, Boyzone are walking about, like, in white suits, like ghosts. Going <laughs> chicky chicky, ha ha. And then Ronan Keaton goes, I can't believe on Travis, on Travis. She was like, is that what he sings like? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ronan Keaton. Raffles, I need you Imagine Meatloaf had done that. Oh my god, let's hear it. Oh my god. That would be something like that. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. That'd be Here's really the good. question, right? Uh -huh. You know, he's like, this is probably about a, uh, this is low hanging fruit for meatloaf chat, but right. he says, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. And what, do, what, what do you think he's talking about? Well, I, I mean, I've, the Jim Steinman said it's like, um, I don't know, fingers up the bum. Yeah. What do you think? Probably do his tax return. My girlfriend helps me with my text. Christopher, leave space for listeners to laugh. 
That was a good joke. You don't actually have to do that on podcast. It actually freaks cunts out if you just have weird silences. Um, it's called Dead Air. You're not supposed to have it when you do radio stuff or podcast stuff. Remember that was a show? No. Was that, was that not the thing? Like uh, they were in the Big Brother house and then... And then the... Uh, Charlie Brooker wrote it. Charlie Brooker. Zombies. Right? Yeah. And what else has he done? What has he done lately? <laughs> What's he done since? <laughs> Black Mirror. Black Mirror, yeah. Yeah. Scottish Murders in the Highlands. I haven't seen that one. Oh, it's, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I think we spoke about this podcast before. A few of them that, um, few of them that I, I very much enjoyed. I loved listening to this this week. It's really... Um, what, this podcast? Have you mm. pre-listened to this podcast that we're doing right now? I mean, the album. <laughs> I loved listening to the album this week. If you can't enjoy listening to this album, mm. you must be some kind of sick machacho, mm -hmm. you know, some sick freak. Do you know anybody know? who didn't like it? No. No. It's actually the fourth uh, album that spent the longest time in the charts. That makes sense? Yeah. <laughs> if you If you don't think about it, it makes sense, yeah. Rumours by Fleetwood Mac. Right. Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Two shite albums. What's the Story of Morning Glory by Osis. Osis. Oh, God. The and then this is number the four. 90s, the nineties are going to come after me. Just what's the Story of Morning Glory? It's just a shame how he never really hit it out of the park again. I mean, two, the sequel was good. but like, You don't need to hit it out of the park again. Do you know, I think that as well. People are always like, oh, he only had that one hit. This is like a sold... What, 44 million copies or something and people are like well he only sold 44 million copies once and it's like do you know how hard it is to do something good once well here's here's if we're using baseball analogies right <laughs> if you smash that ball at Fowler's the park, back in here you can walk around the bases and take as long as you want and enjoy the vibe you know and you're not going to make a lot of money as a baseball player if you only do that once depends how many people buy the t-shirts after you've smashed it at the park <laughs> People like that. He he smashed it like a yeah, That's what baseball players make most of their money for merch. Yeah. I think it's more um, T shirts. Sponsorship. Yeah, but you know, imagine imagine you're baseball imagine you hear the best baseball player, right? Well, I'll, back I'll, in the seventies, he hit a baseball so far out the park that he's still walking around the bases. <laughs> he's dead. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. James Diamond died and then Meatloaf said um, you know, it wasn't like his friend was dead, it was like uh, it was like he died. And then he did. It was like I died because I'm me love. Look at that. I hope people enjoy operatic singing when they listen to this part. I'm actually leaving space for uh, clapping as well mm -hmm. after I sing. Um, is there any bits you don't like in this album? Um, in the digital version, they do like uh, live stuff. Oh, do we listen they, to they that? Like the bolero. A, they do the bolero, and I'm like, this didn't need any of this. You yeah. like some some idiot somewhere has went. Do you know what one of the greatest albums of all time needs? Extra live songs. Yeah. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Imagine that uh, film uh, uh, Weird Science. Weird. Weird Science. <laughs> 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 Weird. Why are you doing Danny Elfman, man? Genius. Yeah. Um, he does. My Christian is a real. I love Weird Science. Great. So that's see that one of the songs where when you put that on in the car and it's like really loud, you're like you hear all the wee bits, the wee ding, 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> now imagine uh, that film, right? Where they yeah. make the, the 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 lady. Yeah. Right. But imagine you know because it comes out and they're like, oh, this is the perfect babe. Yeah. But imagine one of the wee guys is like, oh, don't we could probably put some other fucking stuff like stick a toy car on it or fucking ass cheeks or something like that. Mm. Not necessary. Mm. Don't need to put this stuff on. It's interesting you bring it up. That's kind of the plot to Rocky Horror Picture Show, isn't it? That's they made that wee guy. You know, that's where the connection is. <laughs> that's where connection is. That's what sure. I was leading you into that there. I knew that. I've you seen ever seen the, Rocky Horror Show? I've seen enough to know about it. You did. You like it? No, I've never seen it, but I've seen enough to know. I've seen this the is a musical. I've seen the people who go to see Rocky Horror Picture Show. Right. I'm like, I get it. You're either into that or you're new. You know what I mean? I think it's interesting because I think you would really like musicals because you like this and this is a musical. I, I, I like musicals. Right. I've been to see Les Mis. And... You know, I've seen Les Mis. I've seen uh, Miss Saigon. You know, I've seen other things. So you thought the people going into Miss Saigon looked cool, but you didn't think the people going they, they to see were, Rocky Horror Show The people cool. who were going into Miss Saigon weren't like, 
let's fucking dress up like the cast of Miss Saigon. So you like NOFX where the lead singer wears like thigh highs, but you don't like it when Dr. Frankenfurter wears thigh highs? But I think you would love Rocky Horror Show. It's nothing to do with what the cast are wearing. Right. It's the people dressing people up wear to thigh highs to go in. It's like the it's like that fucking film the room when we went to see that and right, everybody's that throwing shite. spoons. That was shit. Like, I admit that was shit, but you like, kind of keep bringing that up to me. All right? I'm like, I can we not just make watch you go this? That. Can we not just not have? Can can I not? Can I not not be a part of this? Uh -huh. Can I just sit here and fucking watch it? But it's like you've went to the guy? one thing where that happens though. Well, you you, you don't like I, going to the GFT because you think that happens every film. Of course it does. <laughs> fucking some gimps like, do you know? I'm coming to see this in a 35 millimeter thing. Why? It's but the the colors not be better if it's digital. No, but 35 uh, millimeter is better. Or 35 millimeter is 75 millimeter. How about just one big fucking dot wave file? You, get? you don't get it. So dot MP5. It. You don't get it. But I get it. I, t I tell you what, I don't get. I don't get fucking spoons thrown at me in a fucking cinema because mm -hmm. I don't go there. Well, there you go. Did you enjoy an album? This week, oh, the I'm glad you left space for a laugh there at the end of that. <laughs> yeah. You're finally dead. getting in, Roscoe. You can't keep pausing during conversations. You You're have to just keep going. It. You fucking dunce. You can't keep posing during yeah, conversations. Yeah, you can't keep posing. The king of pose, keep, posers in exile over here. Can't keep fucking doing this. We didn't even get to the tattoo. We heard. With two guys reviewing tattoos, we're gonna Google them and search, and then we're choosing if it's tattoo or who or tattoo boo. We're judging the ink, yeah, that's what we do. The, the, the full sleeve or face, that's a big skull or wing. But you pick the design, is it a battle or just fighting? A dragon or a skull, pretentious so tall, you cannot hide. We will decide if it's tattoo or who or tattoo boo. -hoo. Yeah. <laughs> Meatloaf didn't have any tattoos. Not that you know. No, I looked up. He was definitely afraid of tattoos. He was definitely afraid of needles. Wow. He didn't have any. Well, and that's how he died, you know? Do you know, he said when he was a wee boy, the reason he got his good um, voice was because, not from the cough syrup thing, but because his um, he was a shot putt player. And a guy threw the shot putt across the field and it hit him in the head and left a big dent. And he said that he couldn't sing before he could <laughs> sing after that. <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. I guarantee that guy was throwing that shot putt, right? And he was there going, oh, shit. <laughs> you think you know? he was singing good before it? Yeah. He, listen, you don't get you don't get good at singing for he a He said it didn't even knock him out. He's a big boy, you know? <laughs> big, he, he is a good big, big boy. meaty loaf. He'd really taught the world that big fat guys can shag rotten. I think it's so cool that he would like go out and do like fucking forward rolls and stuff like that. And then he would like do a song and then have to go into the wings and they'd have like an oxygen mask to get him fucking breathing. Yeah. He's kind of grabbing that woman's arse on the cover. It's kind of fucked up. Well, you know, that's the way it was back then, you know. Yeah, 70s. People. What do you think about the red towel he's always clutching? Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it means... Um, uh, he, 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 he wants a bull to come after him. <laughs> He's a matador? Yeah. Fair fucks. Hey, what's I a matador with you? Just my podcast co hosts being hard to work with. <laughs> <laughs> but you're alright. Right. I think I've been great to work with. I've been very well behaved. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're a good guy. Um, every week we put. Uh, I enjoyed an album, by the way. Every week oh, we. I, oh, I loved an album. Yeah. Well, well, I enjoyed an album. If you want me to say it that no, way. No, you can love an album. Don't touch me. Sorry, I touched your hands. No, Okay, I enjoyed an album. I went. Oh. That was a very slow version of that game. <laughs> <laughs> Usually people are like, mm, we were just like slow motion sloth shit. We touched hands by accident and then touched hands on purpose to show that we're okay with being gay. Check in on your mates. What I will say about, um, we need to do the playlist stuff. Every week we put on two songs, each from the playlist. Usually Liam's here. Liam's not here. Roscoe's doing it. Scott Roscoe's doing it. Um, so we put on a song from this album mm -hmm. Pick your favourite song That you want yeah. added to the playlist Yeah Put on the 8 minute one We don't care And then we put on a song Inspired by the conversation mm. So any song that's kind of been brought up By yourself Or you know right. science or whatever Okay I'm going to put on a All revved up with no place to go From the album My agent's phoning me Hey your agent's phoning you Yeah Get him on the phone Ask him what his 
<laughs> no. Ask him if you should he should clean like, space for He last. doesn't like talking about meatloaf. I've talked to him about it before. Uh, all revved up with no place to go. Sorry if I had my phone in. I was unprofessional, Roscoe. Hey, listen. That's why I put my phone on um, flight mode earlier. And you were like, <laughs> why are you messing about your phone? Why are you messing about your phone? Can I get it open? Was that crazy? And now look how it's backfired there. You said, let me Google this. Then you know your phone for like a minute. And you just feel like, oh, God, they really can't well, Why read. don't you get Jamie and get stuff up? Jamie. Make it so much easier. Jamie. I don't say podcasts. <laughs> All revved up with no place to go. Yeah, I'm going to stick on two or three. But I love that shit. And do you know what? From the uh, from the goddamn uh, inspired by conversation, I'm actually going to go all time low, dear Maria. <laughs> Kidding on? I'm doing that just to fuck with your stupid fucking list. I'm going to put on boys on. Well, I'm coming with the dear Maria. That's, well, you like that song? Maria can be in. Listen, every, nobody can deny that song. It's actually a good song, you know. No matter what, my boys, I'm going to stick on. As because it was written by Jim Steinman, who wrote this. He's a crazy guy. <laughs> it's a great bit, you know. It freaked me out when I watched that last night. I'll tell you that much. I tell you, I'll tell you what freaks you. He out also now. wrote um, like um, Total Eclipse of the Heart. He's 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 the he's the, he's the guy. Oh, do you know what? Well, fuck fuck that. I'm taking 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 all time low. Out. Now I'm putting in Total Eclipse of the Heart. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You like that song? Once Did you know he wrote it? Time I was in love. Do you know what? Makes total sense. No, dude. Oh, do you know? There's a. No, do you know what? Take that out. There's a. Take that song out. There's a. What songs have you put in? Did you know that <laughs> C. Meatloaf done a. a they playing a, Kerplunk. C. Meatloaf's like. It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me now. Dead Ringer for Love. No. There were moments of gold and there were flashes of light. What song's that? It's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back to me now. Yeah. I'm putting in Celine Dion. Cover? It's all coming back to me now. Yeah. You, so you're going to put on World of That With No Place To Go yeah. and Celine Dion. Celine Dion, it's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back to me now. And yeah. I'm going to stick on Boyzone, no matter what. And mm, Boyzone. Boyzone. Uh, two out of three by, by Meatloaf. Great. Yeah. Well... That's us wrapping up, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Wait, you I much. just feel like I've missed something out. I just, this isn't a bit I'm doing. I just feel like I've wrote down everything and I've done everything I got through. Um, R.I.P. Liam. R.I.P. Liam. His cock and balls have exploded once again. Fell down a um, well. <laughs> me and you in the car. Are you taking a wee picture? Yeah. Oh, that's sneaky. It's the monster truck. Oh, that's just, well, it's, a, it's not a monster truck. Uh, they don't even know what it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We joke about with you. Oh. Uh, it was a monster energy fan. Um, you just left space for laughs. It's good, aren't you? You're learning. <laughs> learning how to do it. It won't sound freakish later. It's perfect. Maybe you're right. Maybe I should slow down the pod. Yeah, you think people people are going? Ha ha! I enjoyed that. And then you're away on something else. You yeah, I actually got some feedback for somebody who was like, "Yeah, just kind of don't jump all over people." You know. Well, just there you out. go. Yeah. Oh, baby, oh. I'm helping you out. I'm sitting here with a guy with a fucking, you know. Theo Von cosplaying mullet over here. It's not cosplay. I'm <laughs> fucking wearing it. <laughs> you think cosplayers don't wear stuff? Nah, it's real, man. It's real. Look at the back. Yeah, I don't know. That's, I can do it. I could have oh, done. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you like that back? Yeah. Did Joe Goss do that? Oh, Joe Goss did that. Shout out to Joe Goss, Ron Barber. Shout out to Joe. Friend of the pod. Thank Joseph. you for listening so much. Roscoe has a lovely haircut and nice new teeth. Please don't compare our teeth on YouTube comments. Uh, if you feel like we missed something out, stick it in the comments below. If you have a favourite YouTube uh, favorite YouTube video, send it to me privately, please. Um, New theme tune, it's called uh, Tooth Compare. <laughs> Don't do Tooth Compare. Tooth Compare on YouTube. Which podcast guest toast has the best teeth? You want to hear my Tooth Compare theme tune? Yeah. Tooth Compare. <laughs> now, tooth Compare. <laughs> yeah. If you look, that would have been the obvious choice you know yeah. not that guy yeah do you know actually before we finish before this is the last thing we'll say before we finish yeah meatloaf was actually in an advertising campaign in 2020 or 2019 he was uh, frankie and benny's vegetarian ambassador i did not know that yeah and they tried to make him change his name to veg loaf and he said no of course but he, he wanted didn't. the money anyway uh the veg range at frankie and benny's was largely comprised of cheese fries yeah so there wasn't real cheese i fucking hate frankie benny's thank you so much for listening to enjoy an album 
Peace and love in the new millennium. Go see Roscoe at the Fringe. Where are you? I'm a monkey barrel, baby. Hi monkey two, barrel. 9 p.m. You better believe it, man. Show's about dead stuff, people dying. And we're in a funny way, not in a sad way. It's a sauna, yeah. 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 Good stuff. There's a bit where a guy, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a bit where a guy falls off a building. He really, really fucks it. Mm. Mm. Just as we have this week, thank you so much for listening. Peace and love in the new millennium. And the old one. Mm.